oftentimes when discussions are had about the so-called alt-right, it is usually in regard to pretty young white males. In fact, uh, the hate rally that took place in Charlottesville, Virginia, displayed a pretty large number of young white males. However, The Atlantic asked the question of whether or not there are women who believe in that movement and who have participated in that movement. And sure enough, there is some percentage of women who uh, are part of the alt-right. However, uh, they aren't as vocal. So uh, George Hawley, who is an author of Making Sense of the Alt-Right, estimates that around 20% of the alt-right supporters are women. Um, now, that's what he claims. Uh, I haven't seen any other uh, research into that. Um, but here's what The Atlantic found from talking to some of the women who identify as part of the alt-right. So there are a lot of white women who buy into this movement. They're just doing it in private. They're not vocal, but they are supporters of the men in their lives who are. So let's hear from Claudia Davenport, who is an alt-right activist. She says the following, as for female empowerment, there's nothing that has made me feel more empowered in my life than supporting and being supported by a strong man. I think that men and women are better off when we stop fighting nature and allow our distinct identities to shine through. Okay, I just, I wanna respond to that real quick before you guys do. Um, I think it's awesome that you feel empowered by that. Like you feel empowered by letting a strong man take charge and you should do you, right? However, it is not my nature to sit back and have a man take care of me. That goes against my nature. So you don't get to dictate how I live my life. You don't get to dictate what my nature is or tell me what my nature is. You do you, I do me, okay? Yeah, and so <laughs> it, they claim that they want strong men. Uh, there are men here who are too strong. Uh, but <laughs> and, and a lot of these guys, you know, they, they're strong in a pack. And then as we saw in Charlottesville, you know, the minute that they have the roles reversed on them and they love to threaten violence, etc. And I don't think anyone should reverse roles on them. And I think violence is a terrible idea coming from any direction. But you saw the crying Nazi a couple of days ago on the show. <laughs> uh, oh my, Strong God. Men. yeah, I mean. I got an arrest warrant, <laughs> nothing I can do about it. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I mean, as Anna accurately called it, it was a cuck-tastrophe. <laughs> And, and he started, it turns out I read today, as a men's rights guy. So these guys that they think are so strong, the minute there's any kind of what they perceive to be danger, they're all in a sense George Zimmerman's, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a tough guy, I work out. And that guy, again, the crying Nazi who kept talking about how he works out and he's ready, but then turned out and wasn't so ready. And so what do they do? The first thing they do is they reach for their gun, because they're afraid. So those are the so-called strong men that you're supporting. But hey, look, it doesn't matter. If you if you like them, you like them. Have at it, Hoss. But as Anna said, you don't get to speak for all women. You totally nailed it. So exactly to that thinking, these are guys who need a nest. Mm -hmm. You, Anna, are sitting in the nest like a hen, guarding his eggs. His yeah. precious eggs. And the fact is, he can't feed himself. He can't do his own laundry. He can barely think. He certainly can't go shopping. Yeah. And without you, he's screwed. Seriously, he can't even think or talk. You put him on a camera, as he was, talking about having an arrest warrant, the guy melts down. Meanwhile, you're having children, raising them, cooking, cleaning, and God knows whatever else tasks he has in mind, so that he can live at least a upper lower class lifestyle. Yeah, well, what's interesting is they do see men as uh, the individuals who should be on the front lines protecting people and yeah. protecting the borders. Yeah. But they think of women as nurturers. Biologically, they are built to be nurturers and nothing more. And so it's always been super fascinating to me when, when women join groups like this because in, in my view, they think less of you. So how can you agree with people who think less of you? But look, if there are women who are turned on by the notion of a man, you know, having that kind of power over her, again, do you? Like, I don't care. I, I have no interest in telling these women, like, no, you have to go out there and you have to be strong and you have to do this and you have to do that. No, I want you to live the life that you feel comfortable living. But at the same time, you also don't get to tell me what my nature is, right, okay? Right. My nature has has never been to uh, be submissive or to be quiet and to not share my point of view. My nature is to be strong. My nature is to voice my opinion. My nature is to go out there and work and be independent. So it's that's the part that really um, upsets me, I guess, because it's it's a group of people telling 
all women, this is the way things are supposed to be, this is what your biology yeah, is. Yeah, because their ideology isn't freedom, right. so you're free to do whatever you want. Um, their ideology is, no, we're gonna dictate it. And so the, this is the proper role for men, and that's what they should do. And this is the proper role for women, and you should know that. And by the way, if you don't, they'll then intimidate you well, online. And if they get an opportunity, sometimes like in Charlottesville, in person. Um, and, and so, and even some of their, uh, this is really funny. So they've got some alt-right women who are more prominent. Uh, they like them because they get to go, oh, no, there's women on our side, there's women, <laughs> there they are, right? But then to, as this article explains, uh, two of them, uh, Lana Lokteff and Isla Stewart went and did this you know, online video, etc. A podcast. A podcast, and they're like, "See, see, we're normal. We're normal. We have women. Okay, we're not, we're not betas. We have women, right?" And guess what happened? Of course, misogyny rained down on them in the, in the comment section. Yeah. Oh, I think that they're feminists in disguise. These women are the same old tainted. Effed up, strong women. Okay. Right, and they intentionally misspelled uh, women with a Y. I, I don't. That whatever. they think that's like a slight to feminists. So for all that talk of like, no, we we like women as long as they know their role. Not even then. Like the minute they see a strong woman, even if it's on their side, their manhood is so threatened by that that they melt down like a snowflake. Yeah, it's it's why you put burkas on women. You put them on, it's not because the women are out of control, it's because we men become turgid, we too mess, we lose our discipline. So we have to yeah. dress you up in a tarpaulin, and this way we're safe and not threatened. Yeah, and by the way, Muslim fundamentalists are the right wing of the Muslim world. So they, they are against freedom, they're against you getting to choose, they say men should dominate, just like these Guys, in their own context, they're the alt right of the of the Muslim world, and that's why they're also scared of women. Also, need to cover them up and have a very similar ideology, and and also say you you shouldn't get to choose what you do in your life, like mm -hmm. like Anna wants to, I want to, etc. We get to dictate the rules. Right, and that's that's the biggest problem. I want to leave with one final component to all of this, which I think is super relevant. So there are member male members of the alt right that think having women be part of their group is a positive thing, and it's because it can help them recruit individuals. And so. They do have an easier time recruiting people because they oftentimes are younger, attractive. So Kelly Baker, who's the author of this piece, says when women do appear in alt-right journals or online discussions, it's as objects of attraction. They need to appear as victims or passive objects of male desire. Also very similar to an ISIS strategy where they recruit women mm -hmm. and they promise them all sorts of things about strong and glorious and honorable men who are going to do the fighting. And then they'll use the women to try to lure in more fighters from Europe and other parts of the world. But if they're no longer virgins, what role do they have? <laughs> Isn't that kind of the plot of the play, 76 virgins? Yeah, I think it's 72 and it's <laughs> and my favorite part of that story is that they might have misinterpreted the Quran, it might actually say, not 72 virgin, but 72 dates. So uh -huh. basically, they're just getting raises. <laughs> and Salman really Rushdie delicious, once in his speech, to be fair. <laughs> they are delicious, yeah. but, but he's like, imagine the look on Muhammad Atta's face when he's like, raisins? <laughs> <laughs> and it's always the same story. Come here, come here, we got something great for you. And then what do they do? Whether they're alt right Muslims or alt right uh, hateful white nationalists. Nah, just kidding, you have to live by my rules and not what you actually want. TYT membership gets you commercial free Young Turks, download it, stream it, podcast it, get all the network shows and support independent media, tytnetwork.com slash join.